But I've on loved. that note, though, your acting is like a perfect marriage of technique and instinct. And it we're going to break right now. <laughs> <laughs> technique and instinct. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Well, our guest is an icon of versatility as an actor, writer, and artist. We love her in projects like Digimon, South Park, Spirited Away, Inside Out, and so much more. We're so excited she's here. We are getting buzzed with the totally talented and delightful Mona Marshall. Woo wow. While you were talking about her, looking she's looking her. around. Like, who's she talking about? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about you. It's just Hello. Uh, Congratulations so on being you. Why, yes. thank you so much. I'm so happy that you're you. W welcome. We're so happy to have you here. It's season eight. You're fabulous. You're here. We're so absolutely, and we are buzzed. How excited. We are buzzed already. Crazy. Yes, I'm. I'm pretty excited to be here too. You guys both have such interesting backgrounds. I had no idea. Thank you. You actually looked us up. Yes, I. Well, I looked you up and I pumped she, her. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm exhausted. Give me information. I need information now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. But it's it, it is amazing how you know you can be in the same field. But there's so much going on unless you are actually brought together in some mm -hmm. way. I know. And even in a session. Yeah. There's right. so much I don't know about other actors because most of us are busy doing. Yes. So we're not looking up each other's credits. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, but this is very well, this exciting. Is so, well, we so have exciting. amazing questions for you. <laughs> oh, my God. We do. you a little bit better. <sighs> and so do they out there. Yeah, so they we're, out there. we're going to get right in. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to start off because we know that you voice like dozens of character voices for the iconic mm -hmm. South Park mm -hmm. series. Can you tell us a little bit what it's like? working on that show? Is it, is it really easy going or is it pretty hectic at times? It's slow paced. Oh yeah, it's very slow paced yeah. considering that we record the last of the voices Tuesday for air date the next day. It's amazing. And there was one day I was actually called in on a Wednesday, something to do I still don't understand with when something aired here and when something aired in New York. Anyway, uh -huh. uh, first of all, I love it. It is unlike any other voiceover I do. Uh, <laughs> and I call it voiceover, uh, doing voiceover without a net. Mm -hmm. um, it requires a lot of different skills, uh, a tremendous amount of listening because how they do that show is they write it and then Trey and Matt or whoever go in and record it. Right. So usually my characters, most of them, most of them, uh, uh, Trey does the, the rough track on. And so there's that, but even the night that we record, and we're talking about 10 o'clock at night, there might be changes. Mm -hmm. They might decide, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, Trey did it this way, but you know, we need a, a little bit more here, or we need a little bit less, or that we need to have this turn or that turn. So it's really very interesting to listen to him. Sometimes I'm matching sync, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes the sync will be changed, which I love. <laughs> yeah, let's do it that way. Go ahead, we can resync it. Thank God they're all there. You know, they're right, all there working right. well into the early mornings of Wednesday. But um, it's always exciting. Um, because I'm required to use so much oh my God. of my instrument. I'm so on the yeah. fly. And yeah. are, is the animation, are you are you reading to the to the picture? Are you sometimes. Reading the animation? Sometimes I'm reading the linear Is that drawings. pretty much locked or? No, that's what I'm saying. It okay. is, it, it's, <laughs> you know, we did a show the night of the election. Oh. And the wow. ending, it was 12 o'clock at night. And when the, we realized that, <clears throat> Who yep. had won? Yeah, we were sent home because they had to rewrite the ending of the show. We had to be back uh. at eight o'clock the next morning. Mm -hmm. So that. the whole ending had to change. Wow! What these guys do is really amazing, and yeah. I mean the yeah. whole team there—not just Matt and Trey, but the producers and the animators and the everybody. Yeah. Um, but I love that everybody's there. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's um, a unique situation. But it's very like, hard on yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. go in, I do voiceover, even if it's late at night. My agent's always saying, "Oh, I'm really sorry, but they went to ten o'clock." I'm saying, "It's the four o five freeway. Yeah. I don't mind. I know. Ten o'clock at they night. They want me at eleven. That's I even know. better. You're yeah. a night owl, Mona. Oh, she yes. is. We can I tell. Am. We can tell. By the she way, just really quickly, after 9 PM. what is the, the story with your jewelry? Because I love yes. what you wear. Your glasses, your earrings. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the, the wire sculptures to me represent a celebration of life. Mm -hmm. um, as an artist, I like doing essences of things. If yeah. you want a realistic drawing or a sculpture, do not come to me for the work <laughs> um, because that's not what I do. Yeah. But I love the idea. It started out uh, with a rapidograph, which is a drafting pen. I have drawn on eggs. I have my furniture at home. I've done all kinds of drawings. And then I went to a concert. It was... Um, a Latin jazz concert, yeah. and I always have my rapidograph with me, and I was drawing my wire dancers yeah. in ink. And then, I don't even remember how it happened, but I picked up a spool of wire, and I just started to create them that way. And I've Wait, did you have the spool of wire at the concert? No. Okay. This was after. So I'm like, that's pretty. <laughs> that's guy, pretty weird. I would not be that rude. You. Let me just grab what my. What do you do with wire? Okay. At a concert, no, but I now. Just, sorry, no. I had to. Now I had to know. I will take a spool of wire. I don't have it in this <laughs> purse because I change purses. But I have one with me because I, I find that um, when I'm listening and creating, mm -hmm. it, it helps me. It helps me focus. Inspiration strikes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, well, and also just like the essence. Yeah. Like every mm -hmm. every sculpture I do. And I've done a lot of big ones on commission. Yeah, it, it's the essence of the person. So it's coming from me. But the great thing about them is they move. Yeah. So then it becomes a part of you. Yeah. But <laughs> the idea of that goes back to an early acting class with a man named Robert C. Board. I studied at LACC. I came out here having a degree from Central Missouri State in English. Uh, in literature. And I was told to come out here because LACC had a great program and I studied voice production. And every week we would have to use the various parts of speech that I talk about in Voices yep. for Fun. Which is great. Thank mm -hmm. you. In a believable way, doing a classic monologue. And one of the things he asked us, he would not let us utter a word when we were doing scenes until we had established through our body and movement what period we were in. Hmm. Wow. And I will never forget him asking this question. He said, um, the idea of making love, uh, the idea of um, uh, 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 the body and the blood uh, uh, is called uh, in, in the Christian, uh, Christian church. What the is body it? And a communion. A communion. communion. Communion and there acting. There we go. Thank you. I'm a Jew. Leave me alone. Uh, have some, all three have something in common. Yeah. And we're all, you know, here we are, 18, 19 years old, and we're going, what? What could those three things possibly have in, yeah. in common? And he finally, you know, we're all blank faces going, huh? And he said, they are the celebration of the spirit of humans. Mm. Celebration of life. Yeah. And it, boy, it hit me. I think it was an epiphany for me. Because that gave me a reverence for what I do. Mm -hmm. right. And <laughs> that's never left me. I feel so very fortunate and so very blessed that I was given this particular talent and I can use it and that I can pass it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, you are extremely you blessed. Um, and, yes. uh, and we are better for my it. My goodness. Yes. And now back to South Park. Yes. Uh, so what was it like auditioning for that? How did that process come along? Well, you know, Mary Kay Bergman yeah. mm -hmm. is the one that established some of those voices. And it's very interesting. Um, the project that led to Adventures of Puss and Dick, A Survivor's Guide to Relationship, my yeah. project, mm -hmm. had originally started as a gift. And I had some disappointment. And one day I'm driving and I'm in tears because, uh, the, I won't go into it, but I was in tears. I felt that I had failed and so on and so forth. And here's Mary Kay driving up next to me and she honks the horn and says, roll down the window. She says, what's the matter? Is there anything I can do? And I just looked at her and I said, not really, but thank you for asking. Fast forward to shortly after that, we did a benefit. And this had to be August 99. 
And, you know, she was doing South Park. She was mm -hmm. full of life. If you knew, did, did either of you know her? Not personally. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. She was just, besides being an amazing talent, she had a heart that just was very big and very warm. So, um, so here we are. Um, she's at the benefit, and our husbands are sitting together, and they're just thrilled because, you know, she's doing all this work, and she's the voice of Snow White as well as South Park. And that was in August. And I remember her saying to me, um, gosh, you know, you ought to do more announced stuff. You know, you'd she had just gotten an announce for something and, and she was encouraging. And then in November, she died. Mm -hmm. And that was, I mean, I don't think there was anybody who knew her who was not absolutely floored. Yeah. Um, later, we've come to find out, I think that it was probably undiagnosed manic depression, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that's so horrible about mental disease like that is, yeah. you know, you got all the world is happening. Here's talented, beautiful, kind, yeah. sweet. And if you have that, yeah. you there's nothing you can do about that no. unless you, don't you get know that. help and you don't know yeah. it. And then you have people saying, well, come on, what's the matter with you? Yeah. When I had to listen to her, of course I'm listening as an actor mm. and I, I'm holding back tears because this was also somebody I knew. I didn't know her well. Yeah. But those two things, you know, made her close to me. Right. But what I remember was her saying in my mind, it was as though she was saying, hey, listen, I can't do this right now, but you'd really be good at it. So be good at it. Mm -hmm. That's what got me through. Wow. Yeah. She was. Dynamic. A rem oh, yeah. Well, dynamic is a great word. Yeah. And remarkable. Mm -hmm. And, um. I don't know how and why the universe works, but I know if it had not been for her, I would not have had the strength and the courage to listen. I am sorry that I got that part that way, um, but I know somewhere she was rooting. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, she so, still is. Yeah. yeah. So well, she found somebody worthy enough to pass the baton to, and mm -hmm. here you are, Mona. Yeah. And it's been great. And now I've made those characters and other characters my own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like you go back to where did the inspiration come from? Yeah. It came from her. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Um, your YouTube channel, and everyone check it out, subscribe, <laughs> Mona Marshall on YouTube. Your voices for fun videos are bananas great. Yeah. Okay. They are like these little baby master classes. I love them. You are such a master of vocal placement. Thank you. Um, can you share your thoughts on that? Well, that actually came out of that voice production class with mm -hmm. Robert C. Board. Yeah. And <laughs> mind you, at the time I was taking the class, I didn't know what voiceover was. This was for stage acting, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then when I began to t study with Dawes, I realized, oh, wow, that's how I can create <laughs> characters. So you're either working forward in that you're, you know you, you see a vision or you see a vision here and you're creating it by oh well you know that that would be somebody who's kind of maybe a little bit shy and as i talk about with um izzy he had to bite the words because he was doing all the exposition or you uh, like i listen to your voice or listen to your voice and mentally i start to think okay where is that placement oh i see that you've got Texture, I'm talking about you, Chuck. Mm -hmm. the texture, oh, but like there's texture. also air. Yeah. That kind of nice sound that you, you get going there. <laughs> Not that I am imitating you, but you're giving me ideas. Same I like thing. the you're... way you sound as me, Mona. <laughs> Very sexy. Mona just found a new character. <laughs> oh, Mona yeah. does that frequently. Yes. Here's my impression and of Chuck Turin. What's so Hi. unique about your voice is you have that slight nasal quality. The great thing about nasality for women, as long as it's not too nasal, mm. is that it cuts through things. Mm. Yeah. So that's a really good thing. I'm Plus, like a Ginsu. There. Mm. there well, and hear that? I'm a Ginsu. That's <laughs> that bright, well, it's a brightness, mm -hmm. which makes you fun for animation. So anyway. The, Thanks, the fun, Mona. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, Stacy. We shall play voices later. Yeah. Okay. Or now. <laughs> or now. We are. Um, or, or but later. basically, it comes out of five placements. Yes. And then how you manipulate them. Right. And I love the idea. Is that actually can you, Yasmin's idea? Can you go over this. those five of steps? Of course. Because um, I thought that was brilliant. There's yeah. nasal. 
nasal, right. which is placed up in here. Right. Okay, and you can put your fingers there and see it. Mm -hmm. And then there's oral. You know, back in the day when people knew who Jimmy Stewart was, that yes. it's all in the jaw, right? Yes. Yeah, that, just yes. like that. And remember, most of the time you're not going to use those pure placements. Yeah, is it like you're a stiffening of the jaw? No, it's a loosening of the oh, jaw. Oh, a loosening yeah. of the jaw. Yeah, because oh, you yeah, got to have that. I just got it. Other, otherwise, you do it. Yeah, it's kind of like Thurston yeah. how to do it. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Jimmy, or, that was a whole different thing because, yeah. you know, he was kind of lanky and kind of yes. moved all over the place. It's a wonderful life. It was great. It's still great. Um, uh, guttural, which is you're using texture. It's air pushed over the vocal folds like mm. that. Yeah. And that's where you, yeah. So with a lot of air, mm. and you, none of that's a strain. Right. Mm -mm. I really needed that for a dry one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's weird. That's really weird. Uh, aspirate, which is air with just enough tone. Mm -hmm. And then you can get into things. Ghost for Mars. <laughs> 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 that, that's what we, we did. Yeah. We, there was six of us gather around a microphone and did this. <laughs> Nice. That's aspirate. And then oratin is your most resonant voice. And yeah. there's a way to find that. And that is you go to the lowest note you can comfortably hit, like mine would be right in here. And then there's an exercise you do where you place your fingers on the bridge of your nose like this. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to feel vibrations. Uh -huh. And then the key line that I use that helps is, the king was groaning and moaning around the room. So then, um. if you want to do more of an announced kind of a mm -hmm. thing, that's the voice you're relying on, and then a lot of lift. Yeah. So for Publix, it's only at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Right. So those are the five. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Amazing. what was that specific video? Was that the same one that we were <clears throat> looking at when she was talking about? That? Well, there's there's vocal I know. place. Yeah, there's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a few different. Um, it was so funny because because you can combine some of those yeah. to create different well, characters, and noidal, right? Yes. When you're doing that kind of sound, you know that um, uh, Lily uh, Tomlin was so famous for. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. adenoidal. Yes. Um, so basically, what you're doing here is nasal, and you're blocking it off. So that gives in the placement. If you were looking at like your, Rudolph. Yeah, like there you go. Yeah. And you could do lots with that. That's right. Especially with pacing. Yeah. So that's really cool. Wow. You know? She's so good. So good. And I like I like when you do. It's effortless. Are you showing off right now? No. No, Chuck. She you just got good all sleep. the time. <laughs> This is what artistry I'm looks just like. I'm grateful artistry looks I'm like. I'm grateful they all have a home in <laughs> Oh my That's goodness what I'm grateful. gracious. No, but I on dwell. that note though, your acting style is such the perfect marriage of technique and instinct. Has it always been as effortless for you as it comes off? Oh, I... I That's a good I've question. I never thought about... Because it seems really effortless yeah. right now that you just like... You could do anything. It's like there's nothing that you can't do. Because it's like, I mean, you know, you have this amazing foundation, but then you have this just arsenal of instinct and improv and confidence, and it just, it just like purrs together. Are you aware of it, or it's no, just like I, a muscle? Because that... I would never think of it, the effort is uh, comes from studying. You know, you study yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I say be a sponge. That's what I tell people who I'm working with. Be a sponge, absorb everything, because we learn from everything. But, um, you know, like a lot of us, I started, you know, downstairs, did not have the greatest home life, and downstairs we had, you know, back then a record player, uh, and mm -hmm. I would just uh, sing and dance and do characters and, you know, I, but I was, I hate to say this about myself, but it's true, I was a snob. I had no, first of all, I had no idea what voiceover was. Cartoons were okay, but that was not my thing. I was a very serious actor. Because you came out to That's LA not my for thing. you yeah, came out to LA for, for. I'm a serious actor. I can just to study theater. For, yeah. yeah, to study theater yeah. and um, work on a master's. And and uh, I was very fortunate in that Robert C. Board started an academy mm -hmm. after LACC that combined RADA with um, what is now what the group uh, or who's the guy like Groundlings or we're well, not Groundlings. 
um, originally came out of uh, Stanislavski, mm. but the group theater. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and that was what we had studied, you know, the 30s when all that was happening. Um, and theater was funded by the government. Thank you. Oh. So, uh, what would anyway, that, be like? <laughs> that was my background in improv. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I had, I didn't even know what voiceover was. I mean, I didn't even know there was such a thing. But I was teaching fifth grade because I was not earning any money really as a <laughs> singer or as an actor. And uh, one of my kids in that fifth grade class uh, was in Dawes's workshop. And he had just oh, completed wow. an album with um, Burton, uh, Richard Burton uh, of The Little Prince. Mm. And she kept nudging me. Oh, you got to take this class. It's going to be so wonderful. It's Brian Cummings isn't. I didn't know who Brian Cummings was. Right. He became my good friend, <laughs> but I didn't know who he was because I didn't know anything about voiceover. Yeah. Of course. And I didn't know who Dawes was, even though I had grown up watching Rough and Completely, Ready. Completely, yeah. <laughs> Quick draw McGraw and Captain. Anyway, so finally to shut her up, I took that class and was like, oh, oh my God, I can be anything. And it, so it was like, <laughs> and you found yeah. your calling. Oh, my yeah. God. It, it Talk about a turnaround. Yeah, right. But um, he was fabulous because he wanted to work with people who understood that yeah. voiceover is about acting. Mm -hmm. It's all acting. He used to say, if you can't act in a 30-second commercial, maybe you can't act. And I mean, not Touché. to listen. Yeah. I understand that it's not the same thing as doing Shakespeare. I know that because yeah. I was schooled but in that. But it's storytelling. But it is storytelling. And even... You know, I've been doing Publix, thank you very much, for a long time, mm -hmm. about 10 plus years. I have learned and continue to learn so much about doing a tagline. Mm. You know, basically, it's a line that if you didn't know better, you think, oh, so what is it? You know, Publix, or shopping is a pleasure and price points. But the idea of, first of all, getting your mouth to memorize so that you can then have fun. Right. Right. Because so that's an instance like where you can't, yeah. I mean, you're doing a character in a way because I am speaking to an audience, but the trick for me there is to realize that I can say those couple of lines in 10 seconds or 12 seconds, make it quick, but still make it meaningful. And right. that's another challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's full of challenge, but in terms of effort, the effort is going over the lines, getting there, going over the lines so that I can then have fun with Voiceover so, and yeah. animation, it's a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. completely. Yeah. Well, animation, you 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 don't really have a lot of time to do that. You're just like on the fly, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On commercials, you have time to maybe memorize a line or two and yeah. deliver as your own. Yeah. And so do you do that? Do you do you... Oh, I don't memorize the, the publics, no. But what I do do is I because uh, I'm listening to them in New York. Yeah. You know, we're recording here. I'm listening to him and like Stoli is the guy that I work with uh, in New York, and a lot of times he'll just give me a little suggestion about touching something or a pause. If you are not schooled in that, I mean, you guys do this. If you're not schooled in that, you don't really understand that it can make all the difference in the oh, world. Oh, yeah. Take just out the, the punctuation, put in yeah. the punctuation. And just yeah. the way you land on things. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that um, it's 22 Squared is the advertising agency. And first of all, their ads are clever. Mm -hmm. They never put down a product. And... The spots are so well written. I, oh, they're amazing. Yeah. They, they're they're really, really a slice are. of life, and I yeah. love that. And it's a yeah. beautiful market. Have you ever been to a yes, Publix? Yes, I have. Um, I husband, love a Publix. Oh, Publix yeah. is like um, uh, Gelson's them. met uh, Bristol Farms. Yes, yes. It's a very. Yeah. It is a very. It is a pleasure to it shop is. there. It is. Yes. I, we were in South Carolina, and I got to find mm -hmm. a um, Yes. Here's a good one for you. Uh oh. What advice can you give our audience? Hey, audience, uh, <laughs> out there. Uh, in regards to laying down a really good audition, something that is memorable, like in your in your opinion, what would make an audition memorable? Being the character, inhabiting even in, the character. Even in commercial. Oh, even, sure, you still yeah. have to know your frame of reference. Absolutely. Who are you and who you're talking to? Absolutely. You have to make, Sue Blue used to say this, you gotta pick those words up off the page. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give them life. I just I did a one-on-one -on -one, um, voice session uh, with Zoom uh, with a young lady who is making a, a voiceover demo. And that was my biggest suggestion to her is you've got to make these words come alive. You, you're not reading words, you're reading ideas that happen mm -hmm. to be coming across with words. Yeah. Plus, you know, background in English. I love words. <laughs> yeah. and I'm a writer. I love words. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you've got to make that happen. Or you have to allow it to happen yeah. by relaxing yeah. 
and being. And not yeah. judging it, not saying, well, oh. that's not that's not no. right or that's not yeah. how it should be. It's like mm-hmm. that. Ha- that's how it is. So it's your job to well, make it so. Both Dawes and Bob Board used to say there is there are many, many ways to do a character. Yeah. Does you say there's a lot of a lot of different ways to do a Hamlet. Um, but that's so true. You know, and they can all be valid. Yeah. Part of it is believing in what you're doing. You know, if, if and never, I, I sh- never, never uh, downgrade anything. Never look down your nose at something. Right. I, I understand that not all copy is good, and I understand that not all written copy for characters is good. It's still my obligation, you know, mm-hmm. that director, that writer, that producer needs something done. My job is to show up, be open to what they have, and then I can always make a suggestion after I've listened to theirs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the but, day I think I know everything is the yeah. day I'm dead. So I'm going to ask you because, you yes. know, a lot of uh, even my friends that are at that top tier of voiceover as you are in, in the animation world, they take a piece of copy that is... It's funny, it may be okay, and they make it into this hysterical thing that's just like, oh my God, how do you guys do that? Because you do that too, and probably just you just you don't even think about it. No. Can somebody mm-hmm. learn to do that? I think what how you do you I don't think you learn to do that. I think what you learn to do is inhabit the character and have fun with it. And and have permission to take that character as far as you want. Right. That's where her technique yeah. and instinct yeah. collide exactly. in a in a beautiful yeah. way. Yeah. You can't judge it, you have to be it. Yeah. Because if you're judging it, <laughs> you, you're not there. It. Well, you're not there. Yeah. If I'm if I'm judging what I'm doing while I'm doing it, yeah, you're I'm in very somewhere. big trouble. <laughs> then you're half there, half not, yeah. right? Well, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's I love that's that. directly from acting. Yes. So what was that saying you just said? That was really great. Uh, don't judge it. Don't judge it. Be it. Be, be it. it. I love that. Remember Stitch that. Stitch that on right the Write that down on your fridge. Write it on the shirt. Take it. To, yes. Put it in the diary. Remember that. <laughs> that's so, beautiful. Mona, what behaviors or actions do you feel have contributed to your longevity and your success? I don't have a distinct All voice. Of them. <laughs> I don't have a I'll distinct I'll answer for her. All of them, Chuck and Stacey. <laughs> I, I just don't. Am. I mean, seriously, I don't have a distinct, I don't have, my voice has basically no texture, you know. Oh, you have so, texture. Where do you, you hear a texture in this voice? Oh, yeah. I you hear, do? Yeah. You hear a texture? Ooh. Yeah, she's got like this really I, cool, well, like, like a, you know. Not yeah, a, your, not your sound, your very identifiable sound. Ooh. When you call people and you go hi, they go hey, Mona. They know ex- exactly yeah. who it is. You have a very strong. Give me signature. that phone number yeah. of yours. Now, the cool <laughs> thing, yeah, but see, here's the thing: you you have a very distinctive sound, but you could do whatever you want with it, which but, I love. It's because I know my palate. Do you even know who you are anymore? No, Mona? that I don't. Know. <laughs> but I would tell you a very interesting story. Okay, though. <clears throat> when I was dating my husband. This is going back. Does he know the story? Uh, yes, he does. Okay, good. This is he a, does. This is just, we I used get to talk to him in what I call the creature voice. I, I was mm-hmm. noodling around with a subverbal voice. Well, so he talked like this, but he didn't speak English really. And I used to, my husband is a very linear thing. Yeah. Oh, and we'd be driving in the car, and I'd go, and he'd go, well, what are you saying? I said, it doesn't matter. Just make it up and answer me. Ah. But I used to do that character and not realize I was doing it. And I I remember one day, this is how you realize you're doing voices and you don't, and you don't even know. know. Yeah. Yes. I couldn't find something. And I'm, I was really frustrated because I was really late. And I remember I'm, I'm underneath, I'm looking underneath the bed and I hear this. And I, this is when I became conscious of it. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Just take your time and relax. You'll find it. <laughs> that was the first time I realized half the time I do voices and don't know it. Yes. It's very weird. But I love that the creature. Is, you're never creature. alone. I am never, never alone. You're never alone. And you're I, in my your life, I've never been bored. Yes. Yes. Right. That is so great. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, like, take her with us everywhere we go. I know. Everyone needs a Mona. And not just for entertainment. Um, yeah, but see, you guys are fun but to play with. You have a, <laughs> yeah, we're fun to play with. You have a beautiful with. spirit. We're like toys, uh, Stacey. Yes, how do you, we are. We're all toys. We're fun size. Yes. Um, <laughs> how do you stay inspired creatively? How do you evolve? I mean, you have been working consistently for a couple minutes, right? Yeah. So how do you keep evolving? I mean, now we're in the whole social media realm and, and, and staying inspired creatively and keeping that whole 
wheel turning? Oh, there's a, there's so many things. First of all, I love the idea of passing on. I love, the, I also love the idea of doing my own, creating my own series. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, the Adventures of Puss and Dick, a survivor's guide to relationships, is about. That. <laughs> Back in the days when we were using paper for scripts yeah. and not an iPad. Oh, sorry, or a pad. Um, iPad, you could say iPad. We love I Apple. would <laughs> draw on the scripts while they were editing. Yeah. And um, I do a lot of erotic art. And my belief, if you look at my wedding ring, it's the yin yang, is that men and women help each other grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I would draw, <clears throat> I would draw penises on my scripts with women inside of them. And I, I, in fact, have a whole series like that because to me, it, it's cele once again, it's a celebration of the spirit of love and what love making is. Yeah. So I decided it would be really fun to have a series that was every man and every woman. I was going to call it Salmo after Sal, my husband, and myself, Mona. Nice. And then I got the idea of, well, the name's Puss and Dick because Puss is a term of endearment, mm -hmm. usually to people from Great Britain. And Dick is, you know, a nickname for Richard. So I began to develop these characters. And so one of the things that keeps me inspired is I want to be able to reach out to people and share that particular thing with them because mm -hmm. I think we are we tend to be very extreme. Yeah. So either it's like, oh, sex is no good, it's very bad, and we must do this and this and this and it's regimented, or it's like there has there's no meaning at all. Yeah. And part of what I want to do with that, besides the celebration of our sexuality. But more important than that, it's the idea of communication. Mm -hmm. Men and women are not the same. We are not wired the same. Um, and the ability to step into somebody else's shoes and see something from somebody else's point of view is an incredible concept. And it's one that is so needed in this country right now. Uh, completely. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, it's um, very valuable. So yeah. that drives me. So what inspires you? That inspires me. Mm -hmm. And then I just did... <laughs> For years, I, I loved kids, and I don't have any of my own, which is probably why I love them. Uh, but <laughs> which I, is I, probably <laughs> why I love them. Oh, my God, that's so good. Are you reading well, Chuck's mind right now? What I'm now? saying is, you know, I have more energy. <laughs> Listen, when you're the greatest job and the most important job in the world to me, Yeah. parenting, teaching. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, you have someone's mind and spirit in oh, your my hands. Goodness. Yeah. And I, I developed a program because, once again, my degree is in English, my first degree. And uh, I developed a program called Mind Magic, and it was to help children uh, create images for what they read. And I did it as a volunteer at McKinley Elementary School for 15 plus years. During that time, I wrote a rap song called The Mind Magic Rap. Do you so, care to perform that for us right now? <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was coming. I, I, no, I didn't. I, no. I, I have it. I, I mean, I have it. I, I have it. I'll pull out my little phone, gonna, buddy. She's gonna. Is she gonna? She's gonna she's perform like, it. I'm doing it. Oh, well, this is uh, no. I animated it so you can see the animation. Yes. Oh my God. No, I did not know that. But my point <laughs> is, my the gal that helped me create the characters uh -huh. that are, uh, that they are now, Puss and Dick are now. Uh, um, Oh, and here it is. Come on. She showed me how to use... Oh, all right. Okay, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. You can't how stand up. You know that, right? Your well, I do will, now. Your okay. mic will go fine. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. Come on, let's go. Ho, ho, ha, ha, he, he, he. It's fun, fun to, to discover, discover what, what your, your mind can see. Ha ha he he ho ho ho. ho, ho. It's easy once you do it. Here we go. Let's close go. your eyes, concentrate, make a mind picture. What kind of magic is in your mixture? The magic you see is called imagination. When you do what you see, that's called the creation. The more you see, the more you can do. You share with me, I'll share with you. Anything is possible with your imagination, and making it happen is a thrill elation. Imagination is sensational. Creating is exhilarational. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's mind magic. Now you know. <laughs> I love it. Exhilarational. Oh my God, what a that's great hysterical. Word. Well, that was just absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. But How I animated cool. it. Yes. I did all of it. You I see what I'm saying? Enough. 
You are a busy bee. Well, that concludes part one with the awesome Mona Marshall. We're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, follow all of us on social and subscribe to us all on YouTube. And just remember, you guys, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>